Spy, good afternoon, and thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Before we continue with the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, you will not miss any future uploads. Certainly, plenty of things going on at the moment here on the channel. The new Weather Talk series ha was released back last weekend. Going to be having the next interview in the uh, days to come, so stay tuned for that. I'm quite excited to bring you interview number two of the series. Upcoming this Sunday live stream, the 90th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. There will be a link in the description below today's video for that. I hope you're available around between four and uh, quarter to five on Sunday afternoon. And you can ask questions, uh, drop a comment, I'll give you a shout out. Um, so yeah, upcoming bank holiday weekend. The weather certainly is pretty decent in many areas, but not all across the UK. We'll look at the weekend details in just a second. But uh, the Manjulian oscillation, something we've not looked at in recent times. You can see here that we are um, out with the null phase and it is in the warm phases of four and five rotating through this um, particular region of the, uh, generally from the Eastern Indian Ocean through the, the maritime continent and into the West Pacific. And there's no coincidence that uh, we will have and have got warmer weather at the moment. Remember, we had uh, a fairly chilly final seven days or so of, of April. We had a negative Arctic oscillation, as can be seen in this graphic here. So we had the negative North Atlantic oscillation uh, and Arctic oscillation here. But notice that we are trending back positive again in both Arctic and North Atlantic oscillations here. So this is the North Atlantic oscillation. And it was slightly negative, not overly negative, but uh, slightly nonetheless. And it is trending back towards neutral, even weekly positive. So there may be a, a correlation here between phases four and five of the MJO, the return of both Arctic and North Atlantic oscillations to neutral or positive. And we're also in a, a, a relatively warm regime at this moment in time. Looking at the CFSV2 weeklies for the upcoming seven days, we've got largely higher pressure in control at the moment. Now, there is quite a lot of contrast in terms of temperature, depending on wind direction. A frontal boundary that's been kind of stuck in the southwest of the UK, that's been separating relatively cooler in the southwest corner, south Wales, southwest England. Southern England, the far south of England, has actually been struggling to get much above 9 or 10 Celsius in the last few days. And that cooler air is actually now filtered into East Anglia also where it has been relatively pleasant in recent days. It's, it's cooler this afternoon underneath uh, quite a thick cloud cover and outbreaks of rain. But um, we obviously have, to the north of that boundary, some fairly warm air. Nothing exceptional by any stretch. We've had temperatures as high as 30 Celsius in the month of May, so 22, 23 Celsius. Uh, all four uh, home nations actually recorded the warmest day of the year yesterday. Um, but a, a maximum for the year of only just over 20 Celsius in Northern Ireland for early May is actually rather subdued, in my opinion, compared to years going by. But you can see here that we go um, firmly into high pressure as we move in the next week here. And I think that is a direct correlation to that phase four and five of the MJO and the positive AO, NAO signal as well. But this is the current temperatures, by the way, at the time of recording. And you can see that we've still got some fairly cool uh, temperatures up and down the east coast here with onshore breezes. Even uh, at my station here, uh, struggling to get much above 14 or 15 Celsius despite sunshine. But that breeze is uh, blowing off a relatively chilly Cromarty Firth, Murray Firth, Dornick Firth. Where you're exposed to that breeze coming in off the cool waters it is notably cooler. But then get up to Loch Ness Garnick and then say around 19 Celsius. And Oban is recording 24 Celsius this afternoon. That is actually Scotland's warmest day of the year so far. Further south, let's not forget our friends in the south. And you've only got 10 Celsius compared to 20, 21, 22 Celsius yesterday afternoon. So quite a big drop actually in, in East Anglia through the Midlands as well. 
were had been fairly pleasant. It's only ten Celsius, um, and which is a a very chilly day actually by the t- by by early May standards. Actually, still got pleasantly warm conditions across much of Northern Ireland here, and uh, again subdued temperatures. Uh, the Midlands of Ireland, uh, down into the south of Ireland uh, as well. Here we've only got eleven Celsius at Waterford, for example. So uh, still quite contrast in temperatures. For early May standards, this is nothing really to write home about, in my opinion, anyway. So anyway, on to the weekend here, and we've got a, a situation like this. Low pressure is largely the dominant player, actually. You can see it um, over the North Sea as we progress through the course of today, and that has been triggering some fairly heavy, steady rain across parts of East Anglia, London, uh, the southeast of the country. Uh, through the course of this morning and through today, I think it's been lingering. Now, the energy associated with that area of low pressure is going to trigger more showers uh, into the north of England, into southern and central Scotland over the next uh, day or so here. So we it basically just kind of destabilizes the air, this area of low pressure. Flabby, not much wind associated with it, but it's just a trigger point for the development of showers, especially with the strong incoming solar ra- radiation during the late morning. Into the afternoon, you see the pop up of those showers and thunderstorms. Keeping a close eye on this area of low pressure approaching the northwest of France. Very unsettled conditions across uh, the, the continent, as you can see. <coughs> Excuse me. And then as we move into um, the day on Sunday, not an awful lot to speak about. Uh, you can see here again the development of showers as the uh, daytime heating kicks in. Across the Midlands, North of England, much of Wales, Northern Ireland, the Republic, uh, Scotland may see some very lively showers across uh, parts of uh, Lothian, Tayside, Fife, up into uh, Angus. We may see some fairly lively showers developing in, during the heating of the day on Sunday afternoon. Then as we continue to press into next week here, we've still got the showers, but then they start to fade away because we start to see a little bit of a cap developing in the middle levels of the atmosphere. As heights come up, we're going to see pressure building over the country, and that should settle things down, and then that will maintain itself right the way through the vast majority of next week. It looks like it's going to be reasonably dry, and, and with plenty of sunshine, it should feel quite warm as well. But we'll look at the details of next week and the coming days to come. No video tomorrow, but obviously live stream this upcoming Sunday is back, so uh, I'll get chatting to you hopefully then. Enjoy the rest of your Friday, and I'll see you Sunday with the live stream. Bye for now.